Hello everybody, in this video I'll explain how to configure SR Linux nodes for a data center network. So this would be kind of a sequel to an earlier post where we explain how to build your own data center with Container Lab and it's better to read this first. But if you just want to see the configuration, this is the topology we have and already built in our Linux machine. So we will configure border leaves, spines and leaves. So if you take a look at our lab, Docker PS, we see that all those leaves, border leaves and spines hosts running in containers. Let's go back to the post of this video. First, we will start with exploring what's already configured in the nodes because Container Lab actually configures them a little. Then we can we can explore that with this info flat command. So if we go to the lab and SSH to one of the nodes, I'll do that with leaf one. You can just do SSH admin at. You can use IP addresses as well, but these names would do the work because that's one of the beauties of the Container Lab. It adds all the entries in your hosts file so you don't have to memorize your IP address for this leaf one for example. So the password is admin. Then now we're connected. Let's see what info flat command gives. So it simply gives me the configuration that I have on this node. This is one way to see this configuration. Um, since I do flat it gives me line by line. I can also do info then it gives me the configuration in JSON format. Now I'm connected to Spine 1. We have management interface configured with DHCP. System configuration allows me to SSH into it and use the authentication method local, which makes me uh, able to connect this box with admin. admin. We also have this management network instance that's an IPVRF. It is basically both interface if you compare with SROS or the out of band management interface, which is management 0.0. We can validate that with show interface command. Here we see there is only management interface with the IP address that is given by the container lab. Now we see what is already configured and with control D, I can go back to my Linux machine. So today I will configure this leaf one and spine one. So every other leaf would be kind of same with this leaf one configuration, except from the autonomous system and the IP addresses. And the other spine would be same with this spine one. Um, so we will see one flavor from each node type. And I will configure the rest of it in the back just to save some time for you. And in the end, we will see how it looks like when we configure entire data center for big network. Now let's go back to the blog post. Um, so one thing that we need to know is this enter candidate mode. This mode is kind of a configured terminal in Cisco or kind of a configuration mode of Juniper. When you go and run enter candidate, you will be able to configure the device. So if you connect back to the leaf one, we are now in the running mode. This is kind of an operational mode where you can only see the running configuration. It shows you at the end of the line. So I'll do enter candidate. Now I'm in a candidate mode. That means now I'm able to configure this node. Let's go back. So as I've said here, one of the first things that we need to configure is a default network instance. As we've seen, there is only one network instance, which is management that enables me to connect to the device. But to configure the rest, we have to have a network instance, kind of default network instance, which is similar to default VRF or GRT in SROS terms or kind of base routing instance, if you're familiar with that terminology. So I need to configure this and I, I'll basically copy and paste it from here. So I'll configure the leaf with that first, that I'm already in the candidate mode. And what I need to do after the configuration is commit. Commit will apply my changes in the candidate mode. Commit save, commits and saves my configuration. I can do commit now without saving, or I can do stay, which keeps my TLI mode in candidate mode. So those changes are applied. If I check with info flat, now I see network instance, default, and 
the type default it is different than the management type, which is IPVRF. So this default is also an IPVRF, but this makes this particular network instance a base routing instance. And you can have only one type default network instance in a box. Let's do the same thing in Spine. So I'm already in candidate state here too. So I can just paste the configuration and do commit save this time. It commits and saves. But if you check here, the remote, it's now running mode. I cannot configure anything anymore. I have to go into the candidate state again. But if you look at the leaf, it's still in the candidate mode because I committed with commit stay. So let's move on. The next thing is the system interface that I need to configure in every node. So this configuration for leaf one, so I will use one, 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 one for leaf one, two for leaf two, three for leaf three, and then you can use whatever you want, but that will be my IP addressing. And I'll use 101 for spines and 200 for the board leaves. So I copy this configuration and go to the terminal, leaf one, paste into it. I'll commit it again check the interfaces now this time i have two interfaces and second one is the system ip now so one important thing is this network instance default in the end that's important because without that this system ip wouldn't be a part of default network instance so that means nobody can reach it from this default network instance um, i'll configure the same in spine i need to go into the candidate mode first because i've done commit save last time i paste this configuration and i'll change the IP address here as 101, but the rest would be the same. It's IPv4, admin state enable, and I'm adding it to the default network instance. This time I will do comment stay here and check it with show interface. And there I see my system IP address. And moving on with the interfaces. So we see here the interfaces starting from one slash three, and that's because first two interfaces in D3 box only supports 10 gigabits. It doesn't matter for my lab, but still to be consistent with the spines, I'll start from interface one, three. So I copy this configuration from here and go back to leaf one, paste it in there. So again, as with the system IP address, I've added this interface into the default network instance. And I'll do the similar at the other side. I'll paste them here too, but this time I'll change the interface because the one is connected to the first port and also the IP address because this 1.1 was leaf one. So I'll configure this as 1.0. And also, of course, the description would be leaf one instead of spine one. Yep, so I'll show the interfaces. I don't see the interface here because it's not up yet uh, since I haven't committed the other side. So the thing with show interface here doesn't show you the interface that is not up. So let's go back to leaf one and commit our interface. And let's check it this time. In spine one, now I see that my ethernet one one is up. To confirm, I go to the leaf and first thing I would do is just to ping it. And if I ping it like this, it will ping via management network by default, so it won't go there. Um, in this case, we have to define default network instance to ping in our base routing instance. So we've got our first link up and running. We've configured the system IPs and point-to-point -point links. By the way, if you're not sure about which port is going to where, you can take a look at your topology YAML file. So the, in the links part of the topology YAML, if you click here, you will see the example from the earlier post. Here, if you remember, we've defined nodes and port mappings between the nodes. So you can configure the rest of the links according to this definition that you made in your topology YAML file. So what we have done in leaf one and spine one, you can repeat them to rest of the nodes in the DC fabric. And then we can move on with the routing of the fabric. So 
In our data center fabric, there will be two routing protocols. Well, basically the same protocol, but two, two flavors of it. We will use eBGP for the underlay on the point-to-point -point links. And then we will have IBGP EVPN on top of that for the prefixes of the hosts, so-called workloads. So all these configurations are actually done in network instance default. Again, considered like a GRT or default VRF. So this EBGPs, the point-to-point -point interfaces, system IP addresses, and IBGP, all of them are on the default network instance. We will start from the EBGP configuration. Then once we have connected to share all the system loopback IP addresses, between the nodes and once we establish that um, then we can start with the IBGP because then we will establish the IBGP sessions to the system loopbacks so for that we need to advertise all the system loopbacks among the data center so let's move on with the BGP configuration this time again I'll copy this part of the configuration go to the terminal and paste it in there so this will be my autonomous system for the first leaf and it will go by 234 for leaf 234 and this is my router ID same as with my system IP address so that's done then I'm committing it right away so this is my base BGP configuration so let's do it for spine one this time it would be 101 in the IP and 101 in the autonomous system. Hit the enter and commit it here too. I'll do the same for the rest of the nodes. The next thing is configure BGP group for our eBGP peerings. Going back to leaf one. First, I configure them in here. Since all the spines have the same autonomous system, I put the autonomous system number in the group configuration and also the local AS in the group because it's same for all the neighbors. And I create this group for eBGP. Again, I commit it. Pretty much same configuration with the spines, but this time I'm not going to give the peer AS because peer AS is different for every leaf. So I remove it from the configuration, then description would something like BGP2 leaf. And again, the local AS would be spines AS. And I committed in here too. Since we already defined some stuff in the BGP group here, it is straightforward to configure the neighbor. And this is from leaf one to spine one configuration. I just copy this one in here, paste it in leaf one. We can do commit stay here. And switching to spine one for spine i of course change the ip address here as leaf one's interface ip address and makes sense to change the description as leaf one and peer group would be spine so one more thing in spine to configure for the neighbor remember that we removed this peer as from the group when we configured the spines because it was different for every leaf so I need to configure peer AS for the neighbor in spines. Let's commit that. And now we can check that with the show command here. And we see that it's established. This is the command that we can list all the BGP neighbors here, both eBGP and IPGP. So as we add more BGP neighbors, they will start popping up here. So in this way, we can configure entire data center fabric, the links between the leaves and spines. So at this point, I'll stop the recording and configure the rest of the... And now I've configured the second interface in leaf one to spine two and a bgp neighbor configuration to spine two as well and also in the spine two i've configured the rest of the leaves and board leaves and the bgp session configurations to them so first gotta commit them i can check the bgp peerings and I see them, they are established to spine one and spine two. And if I take a look at the spine, I see all the leaves and border leaves are listed here as BGP peer. 
But if you noticed, we are not receiving or sending anything from this BGP hearing. So at this point, we need to configure our routing policies. If you go back to post, we will see that next thing is to configure some routing policies. So I copy this part and start from spine one. I'll paste them and also in leaf one. So we defined our prefix sets here, and we need to configure the routing policy itself using those prefix sets that we defined. So in the prefix sets, we're actually defining the loopback IP addresses and point-to-point -point links. I am allowing system prefix set and peer-to-peer -peer prefix set, and I'm accepting them. So I will configure all the nodes with prefix sets and the routing policy. Paste them in leaf one and also here. And of course, we need to apply these policies to our BGP peering. So the next command applies those policies as an export and import post. By the way, I will again pause the video and configure all these configurations in the other nodes as well. Now all the nodes are configured with the same. This time we can expect some routes advertised and received between the nodes. Now this time I see that I receive six routes and if I look at them, I see all the loopback addresses and point-to-point -point interface addresses as I defined them in prefix list. But one more thing here, I learned six routes from both, but I see only the ones that are coming from spine one are active. And from the other one, only one prefix is active. That's because there is no ECMP enabled yet. And the only one that is active from spine two is the loopback IP of spine two. So if I configure next step, which is ECMP configuration, here in leaf one. Then I expect second route spine two next to spine one. And in the neighbor, we can see that the advertised routes from both spines are active in the table. Now it's time to configure our IBGP peerings. We will start from configuring the group configuration for IBGP eVPN sessions. And here we're gonna use the same autonomous system number for every node in the data center fabric. The only thing that will be different is transport local address, the system IP address of each node. I'm gonna copy this and paste it in leaf one. And I'm gonna configure all the nodes in the back like this. I've configured the rest of the leaves. Now I'm gonna configure the spines. So the same configuration, but in this case would be the system IP of the spine one. And in spines, in addition to the group configuration, I need to configure them as route reflectors. This piece of configuration, I copy and paste in spines. And now we can configure our BGP peerings. Similar to the eBGP configuration, we need to specify our neighbor IP address and the peer group. So in this example, IBGP is configured to the spine one and two, which are the route reflectors. Go back to leaf one and configure the BGP neighbors for IBGP. And of course, in route reflectors, we need to configure them as well. And this time it's going to be leave IP addresses as neighbor, for example, leave one and description as leave one. So I'm going to do the same thing in spine two. Then I'll see that leave one is connected to the EVPN domain. Now here we see that we have two more peerings listed here. One of them is established, that is with spine two. This time we see that this session is established to their system IP addresses. Um, for some reason, spine one is still active, not established. If we go back to that, I see that we haven't committed the last changes yet. So the BGP neighbor configuration is not in the current configuration. So I go ahead and commit and check it again yeah this time i see that spine one is also established so this is from leaf one 
um, we got to do the same thing for the other leaves. As of now, we configured everything in this leaf and spines. So we have EBGPs on point point lengths. We have IBGP between leaves and spines. So our data center fabric network configuration is ready. And the next post, we will configure some workloads, some EVPN services, Mac VRFs and IP VRFs on top of this fabric network. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.